Welcome back, rugby fans, to Rugby 411. As always, I'm your host. My name is Joshua Shibata, and this is the power rankings for the MLR after week number 11, another week in the books for the 2022 MLR season. I'll admit, not exactly as exciting as the last couple weeks, though we are inching closer to the postseason and several teams are still in competitions for their those very few playoff spots. Three teams in each conference in the West and the East will go on to the postseason. And both side, both conferences have uh, more than three teams competing for those spots. And in the power rankings, if you're not familiar with them, these power rankings are not reflected by the rankings of the teams or their standings. It is purely a reflection of what happens on the pitch. It is really an assessment of what team was the best team that week and which teams were the worst teams that week. The rankings really don't affect anything, though you'll notice that the power rankings do pretty much reflect quite a bit of the standings in both the East and the West Conference, but it really is an assessment of who I feel are the better teams in the league. And also other things that go into the power rankings include the opponent that you play, playing at home, winning away, strength of schedule. A lot of factors go into these power rankings to determine who are the best teams in the league. Now, week number 11, we had three teams on by. All three of them were pretty high-ranked teams, so not a lot of movement in the power rankings uh, just a few teams flip-flop here and there, but relatively stable. So we'll probably go through this rather quickly, and let's do that right now. Let's kick off your number 13 team. Unfortunately, uh, the new kids on the block having a very tough 2022, the Dallas Jackals, suffering the biggest loss of any team in MLR history, losing to, granted, one of the top teams in the league, the Austin Gilbronis, but losing by a margin of 54 points. That's right, 5-4 points. 57-3 was the score. The Dallas Jackals just not, not, not looking any better than where they have when the season started. And I feel it's not going to get any easier for the rest of the season. They could easily end the season without any victories. Uh, moving down one spot from number 11 to number 12, Nolo Gold, another team that has been struggling as of late. Their game against the Toronto Arrows was a rather weird one. Uh, at first, uh, the Arrows were pretty dominant against Nolo Gold playing in York Line Stadium. And then all of a sudden, in the second half, all hell broke loose. 13 total tries. That's right, 13 total tries scored. Nola Gold scored three of them in the last 10 minutes for a total of five tries from them, eight tries by the Toronto Arrows. Defense was not a factor in this game. Uh, the, the score in the end was 53-36. to 36. I think that might be the most points ever scored by two teams in an MLR game. Uh, this The sliding down from number 11 to number 12 is really just a reflection of how poor both teams played. Uh, at least the Arrows won. But uh, Nola did not look anywhere competent, uh, and that's being a little harsh, but really not very competent against the Toronto Arrows. Moving up a sp spot, even though they lost as well, but their game was a lot closer, is the Utah Warriors, who are still struggling, uh, especially after the loss of their coach, Sean Pittman. Uh, the Utah Warriors were very, very close, though, against Old Glory, a team that has uh, been, been you know, trying to search for, for victories, and, and they got it with the Utah Warriors. So the Utah Warriors, though, were very, very close to pulling off the win. It came down to a missed penalty kick by Calvin Whitting. Uh, his first missed kick of that day, he was 3-for-3 three three beforehand. Uh, it almost looked like it was a sure thing for Utah to snatch the victory away from Old Glory. But in the end, Utah lost by 1.21-22. But because of that close, vic that close loss, uh, I felt, especially compared to the NOLA game, we flipped the two teams around, and Utah goes up one spot while NOLA drops 
a spot. That brings us to the number 10 team, Oh Glory DC, getting their very first victory of the season. A great moment for them. Uh, though, again, very, very close. They could have easily lost it, and it looked like the comeback kids, the cardio kids, the Utah Warriors, were going to snatch another victory away from an opponent. But again, as I mentioned before, the penalty kick missed by Calvin Whitting. Old Glory ended up winning by just one point, but a victory is a victory. But because it wasn't the most impressive of victories, and Utah, you know, is, is not necessarily one of the stronger teams either, Old Glory's victory doesn't really move them anywhere, and they stay at number 10. But congratulations to Old Glory. They got their first win of the season. Uh, moving down a spot is the next team, the San Diego Legion. Going down from number 8 to number 9. A tough, tough loss uh, against the... against Seattle. Uh, continuing the rivalry, the most games ever played between two teams, 10 games. This was the 10th game in that series. Uh, San Diego, it was a very tough day for one of their star players, Joe Peterson, who was only two for five off of the tee. Three of those misses. In the end, the game came down to two point difference, 32 to 34. Obviously, if Joe Peterson made at least one of those extra kicks, the score line would have been a lot different. It just shows you how important conversions and penalty kicks can be, and you need those solid kickers on your team. Joe Peterson usually is one. Uh, he is so much such a important part of the San Diego Legion team that he is the first San Diego player to ever score 100 points in franchise history, and... Even though he did do that, uh, you have to admit that the missed kick attempts and the missed conversions probably cost San Diego the game. Uh, a tough loss against a very tough Seattle team in Starfire Stadium. Uh, so, you know, again, didn't feel like that warranted them sliding down so much. Also, again, Old Glory barely won their game. San Diego barely lost their game. Didn't feel there was any reason for San Diego sliding any further. So we just drop San Diego from one spot from eight to nine, and that allows Seattle, the Seattle Seawolves, to move from number nine to number eight, getting back up one spot with a tough victory over their bitter rivals, the San Diego Legion. Um, gotta give a shout out to one of their top hit players, AJ Alatimu. In contrast, Joe Peterson was again only. Two for five off of the tee. AJ Alatimu was a perfect six and six off of the tee. Those points, again, coming into a huge factor when you win a game by just two points. So AJ Alatimu um, wasn't starting for Seattle the last two games and, you know, started this game. Shows how important he is. He is a difference maker in this game. And Seattle ended up winning the game 34 to 32, sliding up one spot. As mentioned before, we had a couple teams that were on by. The next team, Rugby New York, is one of them. So they stayed at number seven. Number six is the Houston Sabercats, who had a tough, tough loss to the LA Guillotinis over in uh, the world famous Coliseum. It was a very, very physical game. Um, a whole lot of hard hits. If you see, if you follow the LA Guillotinis, and you should on Instagram, there were uh, several really beat up uh, LA players, including Billy Meeks, who I think might have suffered a broken nose, and it looked like Charlie Abel might have suffered a concussion. It was a very very brutal game. LA barely pulled off the win, seventeen to seventeen to twelve, and it was a rematch between Week One where Houston out-muscled and out-played L.A. Uh, this time, Houston tried again, but L.A. was just able to outlast a little bit longer. A lot of penalties by Houston as well. It, it definitely felt like a game where Houston really cost themselves the victory. L.A. played very tough, but Houston could have possibly scored a couple more points or at least not have been putting themselves into positions for LA to take advantage of if they didn't commit so many penalties. So Houston does kind of slide down because of that. 
Um, going back to the game, and we'll, we'll go into a little bit more detail on the game when we start to talk about LA. Let's move on to the number five spot. Number five, not much movement, is the Toronto Arrows. They were number five last week. They stay in that position after, as I mentioned before, a crazy game against Nola Gold. 13 total tries scored, five by Nola, eight by the Toronto Arrows. Uh, I'm sure the fans at York Lions Stadium were enthralled <laughs> by by the scoreline. But again, a lot of sloppiness. Uh, definitely didn't make the Arrows look like one of the better teams, especially when you allow one of the lower-ranked teams to score that many points uh, against you, even though you end up winning the game 53-36, to giving up that many points to Nola is almost uh, as bad as a loss. Almost. But kept Toronto at number five. Um, so they didn't slide anywhere even after that loss. Uh, moving on, number four. Now we're in the top elite row. Number four is your reigning and defending MLR champions, the LA Guiltinis. As mentioned before, pulled off a very, very tough win against a very tough Houston Sabercats team. Um... You know, going over the game, L.A., as mentioned before in prior weeks, L.A. has gotten kind of lucky with the wonderful TMO. Though this time, the TMO actually came back to bite the Guiltinis in the butt. And two tries were called off by TMO, even though one of them was almost blatantly a, a try. You know, it was pretty much shown on the TMO that the ball touched. And the rules are in rugby, for those who are new to the game, if the ball, which has to be pressed down into the try zone, touches even a blade of grass, and it can touch the white line of the try zone too, it doesn't have to go over, it can touch any part of the white line, just a blade of white grass, it's a try. And that was what happened, you know. Watch the tapes. You can check it out on the Rugby Network. Every game is replayed on the Rugby Network, a free app. You should definitely download it. Um, and you'll see that that should have been a try, but for whatever reason, it was not called. Another try was also called back. That one might have been a little bit more 50-50, uh, but blatant try that should have been given, but that is the game of rugby. You're given some tries, you're taking away some tries, it, it's, it, it evens out in the end. But in the bottom line was that the LA Guiltinis ended up winning the game, though it wasn't, in my opinion, an impressive win or a win that I felt should boost them up a spot as much as I want to. Uh, have to be as uh, unbiased as, po as, biased as possible. And so I kept the LA Guiltinis at the number four spot, even after a very tough victory over a very tough Houston Sabercats team. Uh, the New England Free Jacks are your number three team. They were on a bye. And so moving on, number two and number one, spoiler alert, stay the same. Number two are your Austin Gill Gronies, who, as I mentioned before, completely dominated the Dallas Jackals 57-3, the biggest margin of victory uh, by one team over another MLR team. Austin pretty much has dominated what's been called the Texas series between them and their other two state rival in-state rivals. And uh, yeah, nothing much more to report. Uh, easy game, easy day at the office for the Austin Gale Gronies. And the number one spot stays with Rugby ATL. Uh, only reason why I didn't move Austin up over the ATL, ATL were on a bye, but also, you know, putting that many points on the lowest ranking team doesn't necessarily earn you the spot to be number one, as much as Austin Gilgroni fans will probably want them to be, but uh, they'll have to prove it by beating more higher ranked teams than Dallas, so... So, you know, this is one of our quicker power ranking videos simply because, again, uh, not a lot of movement, not a lot of changes, uh, just a few little switches here and there. And that is our power rankings. Again, as you see, the teams that are competing for playoff spots, ATL, Free Jacks, uh, even our arrows are now creeping into the playoff spot, competing with Rugby New York. And then you have 
your teams in the West. Houston is kind of the outlier right now. Seattle as well. San Diego is kind of keeping track, but slowly slipping. But you're seeing how things are being affected, and it's reflected in the power rankings. So that was my power ranking video. Uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Let me know if you're happy with where your team is ranked. And uh, as always, thank you very much for watching my video, and I will see you on the pitch.